Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church, HRC Law Class. I'm your brother, Kasafo, here with your brother, Zakwa. Tell them, everyone. Hope you're all enjoying the day. Today, we're going to be discussing the first commandment in the law of Exodus chapter 20. Thou shalt have none other Allahayim before Ahaya. To start off, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 6 and 7, please. I am Ahaya the Alahayim, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other Alahayim before me. All right, so there are other Alahayims in creation, as we learned previously. Let's learn how to keep this law of putting none other before Ahaya, our Alahayim. Can you read Deuteronomy 13, verse 4, please? You shall walk after Ahaya, your Alahayim, and fear him. And keep his commandments and obey his voice, and you shall serve him and cleave unto him. That's how we put none other before him. We have to fear Ahaya the Alahayim that brought our fathers out of Egypt by serving him, cleaving to him, when other spirits try or seek to lead us astray from him. Thus, when other spirits come into our thoughts to tempt us, we have to catch the lies so that we do not walk after them. Can you read Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 36, please? Behold, the word of the Lord, receive it. Believe not the Alahayans of whom the Lord spake. All right, in Joshua 22, verse 5, please. But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law, which Moses, the servant of Ahia, charged you to love Ahia your Alahayim and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Mm. That delivers from other Alahayims by taking heed to do and obey the law, love and Ahia and service with all the heart and soul. Yet, why should we do this and receive the word of the Lord? Can you read Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 46 and 47, please? And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law. For it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life. It's our life to observe and do the law as man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of Allah Hayyam, as Christ said, putting Allah Hayyam first to withstand the devil. Continue, please. And through this thing you shall prolong your days in the land, whether you go over Jordan to possess it. The words of the law are for our life, and through it our days are prolonged. Hence, it's a blessing for us, keeping us from other Allah Hayyam. Can you read Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 to 17, please? See, I have set before thee this day life and good, and death and evil, and that I command thee this day to love Ahayah the Elohim, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And Ahayah the Elohim shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. The life and good set before us is to love Ahaya, walk in his ways of the fruits of the Spirit, and keep his commandments, statutes, and judgments, putting him before all other Alahayim, and he will prosper us to live and multiply if we do so. If we do not do these things, another Alahayim has found place in our hearts through lies to believe them instead of Ahaya. Continue, please. But if thy heart turn away, so that thou would not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other Elohims and serve them. Whose words we believe we will hear and end up serving them and worshiping them by our works. Can you read Romans 6 and 16, please? Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. This is the truth. Thus, if our heart turn away from hearing and believing the word of Ahaya, 
because we yielded ourselves to another Allah to serve them to sin, just as Paul attested, it will lead unto the death. This is the same understanding Moses taught us out of the law by the same spirit working in Paul. Can you read Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 18 to 20, please? I denounce unto you this day that you shall surely perish and that you shall not prolong your days upon the land whether thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Creation is witness of the life we have set before us, and we have the opportunity to choose to love our Haya and put none other before him for a great reason. Continue, please. That thou mayest love our Haya the Allahayim, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days. The reason we ought to love our Haya obey his voice and cleave unto him is because he is our life and length of days. He is also a good reward of those who love him as opposed to other Allah Hayyam. Continue, please. That thou mayest dwell in the land which Ahaya swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. Seeing he is our life and his words are our life, Thus, we are to remember Allah Hayyam in everything in our life. Can you read Deuteronomy 8 and 18, please? But thou shalt remember Ahaya the Allah Hayyam, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Other Allah Hayyam don't reward us with such blessings as Ahaya, Hayyam. Rather, they reward us with punishments and death. Hence, there is a multiplying of sorrow with anxiety, depression, or other mental health issues when following after other Allah Hayyam. Can you read Psalm chapter 16, verse 4, please? Their sorrow shall be multiplied that hasten after other Allah Hayyams. Thomas helps understand how sorrows are multiplied by going after other Allah Hayyam and the rewards they give because a demon explain what they do for the devil. Can you jump in that Acts of Thomas chapter 75, please? And the devil said, I ask of you, give me permission to leave or I'll even go to the places where you want me to be and I'll take all of your instructions. I will not listen or fear my ruler that has authority over me like you that have come to preach good news, so have I also come but to destroy. And like you, if you don't fulfill the will of him that sent you, he will bring punishment upon your head. So it is with me also. If I do not do the will of him that sent me before my appointed season and time, he shall send me to my own nature. And like your Christ that helps you in whatever you do, so it's my father that helps me in whatever I do. And in the same way, he uses you to prepare a vessel worthy of inhabiting. So also does he seek out a vessel whereby I may accomplish his deeds. In the same way, he nourishes and provides for his subjects. So also does he prepare chastisements, punishment, and torments for them that become my dwelling place. That's the reward of having other Allahaya before Ahaya. Continue, please. And in the same way, he rewards you for your works by giving you eternal life. So in the same way, he rewards my works by giving me eternal destruction. Demons have destruction to come upon them too, just like the persons they inhabit to cause to sin. Continue, please. And like you that are refreshed by your prayers, good works, and your spiritual thanksgivings, so am I also refreshed by doing murders, adulteries, and doing sacrifices made with wine upon altars. Demons cause transgressions to refresh themselves, just as the servants of Ahaya Alahayam are refreshed by prayers, good works, and thanksgiving. Continue, please. And like you, 
as you convert men to eternal life, so do I also pervert men that obey me to eternal destruction and torment. The apostle by the spirit of Christ speaks the words of life in the law and fruits to convert souls. And also his actions, his manner of life helps convert souls. While demons, they speak lies in our minds. Or through false prophets, they pervert us from the Ahayala Hayam to obey them into eternal destruction. And they also operate in a person to set a bad example, which also deters people from the faith as well. We have to truly keep our mind on Ahaya's truth and his law and speak in truth at all times so he can be in all our thoughts so we do not forget him in our hearts to give heed unto the devil or his spirits to be perverted by their lies to obey them. Alahayim warned us in his law of what the outcome would be if we do put other Alahayims before him. Can you read Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 19 please? And it shall be, if thou do at all forget Ahiah the Alahayim, and walk after other Alahayims, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day, that ye shall surely perish. Notice he said, if we do at all forget Ahiah Alahayim, we have to actually remember him at all times, in everything. This walk requires us to perfect that, to be perfect with our Alahayim. Walking after the voice of other Alahayims and serving them by doing their law, either by walking in the works of the flesh or walking after the desires of them, or worshiping them is putting another Alahayim before Ahaya, which leads to death, just as it has for others of all time. Continue, please. As the nation which Ahaya destroyed before your face, so shall you perish, because you will not be obedient unto the voice of Ahaya your Alahayim. Hence, to keep the law of not putting another Alahayim before Ahaya, only obey his voice to be obedient to what he commands, not adding or diminish from his laws, statutes, and commandments. Can you read Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26 to 28, please? Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if ye obey the commandments of Ahaya Yalahayim, which I command you this day. And a curse if you will not obey the commandments of Ahaya your Alahayim. But turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other Alahayims which ye have not known. Notice the curse comes if we break that first command to turn aside out of the way of Ahaya to go after another Alahayim, putting them before him to depart from his law. This is not right for us to do. Can you read Deuteronomy 6, verse 14 and 15, please? You shall not go after other Alahayims, of the Alahayims of the people which are round about you. For Ahaya the Alahayim is a jealous Allah among you. Least the anger of Ahaya thy Alahayim be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. After that, they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after the Alahayim, saying, How did these nations serve the Alahayims? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto Ahaya the Alahayim. All right, that was just Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 30 and 31 for reference. Oh, we should have. It's all good. You on the roll. Actually, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't ask how other nations worship that Alahayim with the intent of doing it as well, because they commit things Ahaya hates. Continue, please. Deuteronomy 12 and 31. For every abomination to Ahaya, which he hateth, have they done unto their Alahayims. For even their sons and their daughters have they burnt in the fire to their Alahayims. What thing soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Now it's interesting. Hopefully we understand. We shouldn't add or diminish from it because we will either be listening to another Allahim to add something that Allahim didn't command, 
or we'll take heed to another Allah Hayyim to diminish and not do something that Allah Hayyim said, which altogether, the things that these other Allah Hayyim teach are things that Ahaya actually hates. So he's helping us to know, do what I'm asking you to do and stick to that. That's the narrow path so that no other spirit can lead you away from him. And you can know what Allah was doing for our health and well-being because a part of the covenant in, what is it, Deuteronomy chapter 18, where he said he's going to raise up a prophet like unto Moses and that we should listen to his words. He was letting us know that prophet would continue giving us more of the words that come from Allah So everything that Yachay taught, he wasn't taken away or adding to what Allah was teaching. He was actually, how do you say, it? he was clarifying it? Um, uh, the words right on the tip of my tongue, expounding. Thank you. He was expounding for us to understand the Father better and to keep his law in truth and mercy. Okay. Ahaya is a lover of souls and has no pleasure in the death of anyone that dies. He understands these other Allah has pervert souls to internal destruction, so he hates what they lead people to do and doesn't want us to love it either for our own life's sake. Every nation is led by spirits of authority whose doctrines lead them astray from Ahaya, as we learned before. And can you just read that portion again in Jubilees 15 and 31, please? But there are many nations and many peoples, and all are his. And over all hath he placed spirits and authority to lead them astray from him. In these latter times, along with these spirits and authority that have been leading the nations astray, there are seducing spirits and doctrines of devils to lead us astray from putting Allah first as well. Can you read First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, please? Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. We have to be mindful of what we listen to and what we take heed to, that Allah Hain be in all our thoughts, because it's giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils is going to be a major stumbling block. And speaking lies and hypocrisy are signs of seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, okay? The definition of having the conscience, the conscience seared is G2743. It means to brand, cauterize. That is, by implication, to render unsensitive, figuratively. Sear with a hot iron. So these doctrines and spirits make us insensitive to our conscience to be able to listen to the spirit of truth in us, convicting us to repent and do right. Ahaya is sincere about not putting any other Allah before him, knowing these other lords lead nations astray from him. And as we can see from Timothy, that these spirits and devils, they're actually teaching things that helps people become insensitive to the conscience, their heart to actually listen to the conviction of heart to change. And al -Hayim, he gave us the spirit of truth and the spirit of um, deceit that's there telling us what's going on within us for us to listen to and turn unto him. So... Walking in Allah Hayyim's fear, not putting any other Allah Hayyim before him in our works will keep us. Our Lord stood in the word of our Allah Hayyim against the devil to show us how to keep the law of not putting another before him. Matthew chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, and then verse 8 to 10, please. All right, Matthew chapter 4, verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of Allah Hayyim, Command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Allah. 
Matthew chapter 4, verse 8. Again, the devil takes him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Yahweh unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship Ahiah the Elohim, and him only shalt thou serve. This is what we ought to do to abide in the commandment. Likewise, the law, as you see, he had the law for his religious reason and, and to know what was right in every matter, the word of Elohim. All right. It's the same thing we must do for the devil to flee from us. Can you read James 4 and 7, please? Submit yourself, therefore, to Elohim. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. We see through Lord Yache. Submitting ourselves to Allah Hayyam is by cleaving to his word and letting that stand in our thoughts and in our inclination. Yache did it by cleaving to the word and not entertaining the devil's temptations because he had no desire in him aside from his father's will. The devil works in pride, fornication, lust, covetousness, anger, wrath, envy, hatred, and lying, and vexation got to add vexation playing in emotions using hastiness of spirit and eagerness to fulfill desires and vain words to be deceived in our souls to act on our desires that are not good Ahaya works in obedience to his voice in love speaking the truth at all times with long suffering and understanding to master every evil and work all righteousness and keeping a temperate mind would add keeping a temperate mind and reasoning that's essential as well to hold fast to the will of Allah. Hayim. Humble ourselves in this fashion as Christ did to cleave to the word will help us learn obedience. Can you read Philippians 2, verse 8, please? And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Hebrews 5 and 8. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Even so for us, if we humble ourselves under the hand of Allah Hayyam, putting his word first and living by his word, not putting any other entity before him to lead us away from his law and the fruits of his spirit, we shall be exalted in due time. Can you read First Peter 5, verse 6 and 7, please? Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of Allah, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. As formerly taught, humble ourselves is to cast our cares upon him, being honest and staying out of vexation while cleaving to his law and testimonies in every respect of our life. And as you can see from Peter, this is literally Allah Hayim wants us to do this so that he can exalt us, even as he did for our Lord. Continue verse 8, please. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. With the devil seeking whom he can devour, be vigilant at all times, cleaving to the fear of Allah Hayim in his law at all times. And be sober, which means discreet, paying attention so as not to offend Allah Hayyam's law or do anything for our own interests to get an advantage by considering the best interests of everyone. Continue, please. Home resist steadfast in the faith. Resist by discretion and vigilance to humble ourselves in every respect because if no passion arises in us to get us in our feelings, he has no place to enter. Can you read Ephesians 4, verse 26 and 27, please? Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Remember, because if we give in to wrath, it gives place to the devil, okay? Give in to passions, it gives place to the devil. So the battles requires us to be consistent, unwavering in resistance in faith, not to stay in anger, to get into our feelings, to give place to the devil, nor to operate in that anger. 
This is what we all face, and we are learning to resist. Continue in First Peter 5 and 9, please. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Knowing the devil is seeking how to get us into our feelings, to put him before Allah Hayyam, we have to continue learning to draw near to Allah Hayyam by cleansing our works and our hearts in humility and letting the law be our guide in simplicity in this life. Can you read James 4 and 8, please? Uh, standing on the law and standing in temperance. Um, I think those two are important for that. Uh, essentially, yes, sir. As she said, be sober and vigilant. That's a big standard for us, the law and temperance. Thank you, brother. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're all going through this in the world. So no matter where you are in that process, keep working, keep building. Don't be deterred. All right. James chapter 4, verse 8. Draw nigh to Elohim, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. No. Temperate perspective. You may find you're struggling to draw nigh to Allah. You may find areas you need to work on. Notice what James said. He didn't speak anything of giving up. Draw nigh to Allah and he would draw nigh to you. Keep working at it. You see, you notice something that's another spirit there, another law that's working in you. You get to see the truth. Okay, there's still a double mind to overcome. Continue the work. Continue cleansing so that we can attain. Because the double mind comes from other spirits having placed in our thoughts to lead us away from keeping our high Allah first and submitting and holding fast to his law. Can you read Psalms 10 and 4, please? The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after Allah Allah is not in all his thoughts. So understand, any time, any inclination, feeling, thought, or even from someone that's leading you not to have Allah in all your thoughts and not to seek after him, even after you fall and not to get up, be strong, and continue seeking after him to draw nigh to him, that's not Allah Hayyam, all right? Because Allah Hayyam, that when he's in our thoughts, we'll seek after him. All right. Understand that the war starts in the mind where the spiritual beings lead us from the law to put them before Allah Hayyam's commands in our life. Can you read Romans 8 and 6, please? For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So if our mind is in focus on the spiritual things of the law, we will not be able to remain steadfast in the faith to resist the devil by obeying the law in humility. The reason being, Romans 8 and 7, please. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Allah, for it is not subject to the law of Allah, neither indeed can be. A mind that is subject to passions and personal desires is unable to resist the devil by cleaving to the law with the whole heart and simplicity because it is subject to the motions of sins in the flesh. Can you read Romans 7 and 5, please? For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Remember the spirit of sin knows the law of life to use it against us in our flesh and entice us to put lust before Ahaya in our minds to act upon it. Can you read James 1, verse 14 and 15, please? But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So it's lust enticing and drawing us away to other spirits. So is the law of the commandments the issue? Can you read Romans 7 and 7, please? What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Allah forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. 
For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. So it's not the law that Allah gave for us to cleave to that's keeping us from obeying the law to put him first, but rather the carnal mind that still remains with us, giving place unto lust to sin according to the law. Romans 7 and 24. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Overcoming the motions of sin in our flesh is not something we can overcome in our own as we are mortal men at war with spiritual wickedness. We need to humble ourselves under the hand of Allah Hayyam, casting our cares upon him, being honest about what we have going on in ourselves with no lies so that the truth can begin to set us free by Lord Yache effectual working in our minds to cleave to the law. Romans 7 and 25. I thank Allah Hayyam through Yache Christ our Lord, so then with the mind, I myself serve the law of Elohim, but with the flesh, the law of sin. You see that division that we need to get to, to separate ourselves where our mind is set on one thing. And we know the difference that when we're getting into our flesh, when we feel we're getting into our feelings, we're getting into the motions of sin to know, hold on, that's not the direction I need to go to serve my Elohim. My mind needs to stay on the law, not carnal things, not sensual, devilish things. Okay. Anything on that, Zachary? Mm. He said, um, so then with the mind, I myself serve the law of Elohim, but with the flesh, the law of sin. It's the, the mind has to overcome the flesh. So once we make up our mind and actually truly make a decision to cleave unto Allah and to walk in his ways and allowing that to be our desires, then the mind will overcome the flesh. But if we don't, if we're double-minded and we still have pleasure in the flesh, then the flesh will still have place, though our mind may be worn against it. So both of them have to be in agreement. Our mind and our flesh have to be in agreement with one another to not want it, to not desire it, to desire the same thing. Become one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The spiritual mind of Christ, humbling ourselves, submitting to the spiritual law and truth, and speak in truth while walking in truth through the fruits of the spirit that comes from the law is essential to overcome the devil and his spirits that seek to be in our thoughts instead of Allah Hayyam through the lust of the flesh. Our mental focus in love and truth is to put every evil thought in subjection to obedience of Yache, so no other Allah Hayyam may come before ours. Can you read 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4 and 5 please? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Elohim to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of Elohim, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We have the spiritual words of Elohim. The law is spiritual and the fruits of the spirit are spiritual weapons to fight with as these weapons cast down the wicked imaginations of seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now we all are coming to learn that we have been enemies in our minds, being led by dumb idols under the dominion of other lords. Yet now that we are awakening, the name of our Allah Hayyam is a major step to coming out from under other Allah Hayyam. Can you read Isaiah 26 and 13, please? Okay. O Ahaya, our Elohim, other lords beside thee have had dominion over us, but by thee only will we make mention of thy name. All right. The names matter to deliver us from sin and the spirits that lead us astray. So though we learn and okay, I've been serving in other spirits, yet now that I know, I'm calling on Ahaya Elohim and his son, Yache, to bring me out of this. 
Psalm 16 and 4, please. Their sorrow shall be multiplied that hasten after other alliance. The drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. Right. These names are important. Into these true names has an effect in helping come out of the struggles of mental health, the sorrows that are multiplied from hasten after other alahayims, and it delivers us from the other lords that we've been under in our service to the um, idols of the Gentiles. The name of our alahayim is what was told to Moses. In Exodus 3, verse 13 and 14, when Moses knew we would ask, what is the name of our Allah Hayyam? <laughs> Continue, please. And Moses said to Allah Hayyam, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The Allah Hayyam of your fathers have sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And Allah Hayyam said unto Moses, Ahaya Asherah Ahaya, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Ahiah hath sent me unto you. This is the name of the Alahayim of Israel, Ahiah. So though there are many spirits in the world, yet to us, Ahiah, Ashri Ahiah, is our Alahayim. He also gave command to believe on his son's name. First John 3 and 23, please. And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Yahweh Christ, and love one another, as he gave us commandment. And as you know, love one another means you hang the whole law on that. That fulfills the whole law. So that leads back to obeying his voice and doing all his commandments. The name of the son is Yache, whom we are to believe on by command of Ahayala Ahayim of Israel. We have to be mindful not to make mention of the name of any other Allah Hayyam in reverence as Allah Hayyam, praise or worship to put none other before our Allah Hayyam for the law's sake. Can you read Exodus 23 and 13, please? And in all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect and make no mention of the name of other Allah Hayyams, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. Remember, the law is our life. Not making mention of other alahayim is a law with purpose for prolonging our life. The names are important, so let's be diligent to follow after the true alahayim and his son in love. Remember, demons believe and fear this one true alahayim, yet fear alone without obeying him. To go serve other alahayim is not right in his sight, and there's no life in that, right? As we learned in the last lesson on... um fleeing from partiality this is the way of the heathen where the, to fear Allah Hayyam, believe in him but not actually obey him and serve him in truth this is the way of the heathen like the Samaritans who were brought to Samaria can you read 2nd Kings chapter 17 verse 33 and 34 and then jump to 41 please 2nd uh, Kings chapter 17 verse 33 they feared Ahaya and serve their own Elohims, after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. When one believes Ahaya but still serves other Elohim, it's not possible to keep his law. Continue, please. Second Kings chapter 17, verse 34. Unto this day they do after the former manners. They fear not Ahaya, neither do they after their statues or after their ordinances or after the law and commandment which Ahia commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel. 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 41. So these nations feared Ahia and served their graven images, both their children and their children's children. As did their fathers, so do they unto this day. All right. Now we see from the scriptures, that's a foreign doctrine to fear Ahaya and serve other spirits and not walk in his statutes, his ordinances, his laws, and his commandments. This double mind is not what Allah Hayyam wants for us. Can you read Joshua chapter 23, verse 6 through 8, please? All right. So this is just like saying the law is done away with. We yeah. can serve Allah Hayyam, but the law is done away with. Right. Spare it alone. Uh, right. Uh, Joshua 23 and 6. 
Be ye therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that ye turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left, that ye come not among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the names of their Elohims, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them. But cleave unto a higher your Elohim, as ye have done unto this day. Ahaya doesn't want us to learn the way of the heathen as serving their Elohim, because spirits of authority lead us astray from him. Can you read Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2, please? Thus saith Ahaya, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. The heathen are into zodiacs, the signs of heaven, which are spirits of the elements of darkness that cause harm. Can you read the Testament of Solomon, chapter 72, please? Yes. And I commanded another demon to come before me. And there came before my face 36 spirits, their heads shapeless like dogs. But in themselves, they were human in form, with faces of asses, faces of oxen, faces of birds. And I, Solomon, on hearing and seeing them, wondered, and I asked them and said, Who are you? But they, of one accord, with one voice, said, We are the 36 elements and the world rulers of this darkness. But, O King Solomon, thou wilt not wrong us, nor imprison us, nor lay command on us. But since Ahaya Elohim hath given thee authority over every spirit in the air and in the earth and under the earth, therefore do we also present ourselves before thee like the other spirits. From ram and bull, from both twin and crab, lion and virgin, Scales and scorpion, archer, goat horned, water pour, and fish. Those are the twelve deacons of the zodiacal circle that the heathen believe, so they are dismayed by the horoscopes these spirits give. Continue, please. Then I, Solomon, invoked the name of Ahia Saboth and questioned each in turn as to what was its character. And I bade each one come forward and tell of his actions. Then the first one came forward and said, I am the first deacon of the zodiacal circle, and I am called the ram, and with me are these two. So the twelve zodiacs have spirit under them that cause harm. Continue, please. So I put them the question, Who are you called? And the first said, I, O Lord, am called rocks. And I caused the heads of men to be idle, and I pillaged their brows. So Elohim wanted us not to pay heed to the zodiacs, because following other spirits would be to our hurt, as we see by evidence of what these spirits do. Moreover, he didn't want us to learn the way of the heathen to worship their angelic rulers. Unfortunately, it was prophesied that it would befall the children of Israel that we would learn and follow the ways of the heathen to error after their ignorance. Can you read Jubilee chapter 6, verse 35, please? For I know, and from henceforth shall I declare it unto thee. And it is not of my own devising. For the book lieth written before me, and on the heavenly tables the division of days is ordained. At least they forget the feast of the covenant and walk according to the feast of the Gentiles after their error and after their ignorance. Remember, it's the spirits of authority that leads the Gentiles astray to error and ignorance because they don't understand they are not serving the living Elohim. They didn't know what they're doing in their worship of angels, yet we have to make sure we aren't beguiled to follow after these spirits and angels. Colossians 2 and 18, please. Let no man beguile you of your reward in voluntary humility in worshiping of angels. Intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. If we get beguiled to walk after the ways of the Gentiles in error, worshiping their rulers, the evidence is shown by us doing the following. Can we read Jubilee 6, verse 36 to 38, please? 
For there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon. Now it disturbs the season and cometh in from year to year, ten days too soon. So following moon-based calendars are errors of ignorance in the ways of the Gentiles. Continue, please. For this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day, the day of testimony, and an unclean day, a feast day. And they will confound all the days, the holy with the unclean, and the unclean day with the holy. For they will go wrong as to the months and Sabbaths, and feasts and jubilees. So moon calendars disturb everything and make the feasts unclean as they are not on the accurate days of the feasts. Continue, please. For this reason I command and testify to thee that thou mayest testify to them. For after thy death thy children will disturb them, so that they will not make the year 364 days only. So also... Calendars that are not 364 days only are errors of ignorance in the ways of the Gentiles. Continue, please. And for this reason, they will go wrong as to the new moons and seasons and Sabbaths and festivals, and they will eat all kinds of blood with all kinds of flesh. So, walking in the ways of the Gentiles, serving their rulers, leads us astray from the feasts and Sabbaths of Ahia, and leads us to eat blood and eating all kinds of meat, not observing the dietary law. So we can know the symptoms of idolatry to help us cleanse our ways, not putting any other before the true Allah Hayyam and our Lord Yahache. Make sure we got that. You got moon calendars. Any calendar is not 364 days, eating blood and all kinds of meat, not observing the dietary law, not observing the feast days and not observing the Sabbaths are all indications of other spirits and doctrines of devils leading us astray from Allah Hayyam. These spiritual beings are unrighteous, and the Lord Yat is judging amongst them for leading mankind astray from Allah Hayyam the Father. Can you read Psalm 82, please? Psalm 82, verse 1. A Psalm of Asfa. Allah standeth in the congregation of the mighty. The mighty is Allah. The congregation is of the mighty father, full of angels, as we formerly learned. There are millions before him. Continue, please. He judgeth among the Allah So, Allah the Lord Yache, stands in the congregation of Allah the Father and judges amongst other Allah which are angels, as they are in doing right, having the nations under their authority. Continue, please. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Shelah. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, you're Allah and all of you are children of the Most High. This confirms that Christ is speaking to the other Allah in the spiritual world. Continue, please. But ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Though Allah and spiritual beings in authority, for their sins against the word of the Lord, they will die just like mortal men. Continue, please. Arise, O Allah, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. This helps understand it's Christ who is being spoken of, because he shall inherit all nations after he puts down the other Allah. Let's continue learning about not having any other Allah amongst us. Can you read Psalms 81, verse 8 and 9, please? Hear, O my people, I will testify unto thee. O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. There shall no strange Allah be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange Allah Can you continue to Jeremiah 25 and 6, please? And go not after other Allah to serve them and to worship them, and provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands, and I would do you no hurt. This is our Allah 
He said, There shall no strange Allahayam be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange Allahayam. And also, don't go after any other Allahayam to serve them or to worship them or to provoke him to anger with the works of our hands, which we do when we're serving other Allahayams, and he will not hurt us. He is no liar, so we will be delivered from all things if we put none other Allahayam before him. Can you read Romans 8, verse 31 to 39, please? What shall we say to these things? If Allah be before us, who can be against us? Amen. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of Allah elect? It is Allah that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of Allah, who also maketh intercession for us. Hey, is that? Who's that? I'm sorry. Uh -huh. You remember we've been learning about the law of liberty, not being under the law of judgment. We uh -huh. have this opportunity to grow. Who is he that condemneth? Like, we have to be sure not to let anyone deter us from believing that we can attain and we can get this right and come out of our sins. And we also have to be mindful of any thoughts that condemn us, even when we condemn ourselves, to know that's the devil. Christ died so that we have this grace to get this right because he wants us to get there. Allah right. wants us to put away these other Allah and to continue to work so that we can get away from them. All right? Amen. That's why uh, Romans 8 and 35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of Allah which is in Christ Yate, our Lord. It's nothing that can right. deter us. Right, we're going to overcome it all. Amen. Because in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. It's Allah I am that willeth and worketh. We just have to stay the course, continue learning humbly, seeing things and being honest about things. Because we need truth. We need truth to come out from the service of Adal Alahim. Well, you need Yate, because he is the spirit of truth. Amen. Amen. Only through his spirit entering into us can we actually speak the truth and actually be honest with ourselves and be honest with others. But we have to keep that it, all ties him. it all ties back to him. Yeah, to put none other Allah before Allah. <laughs> All right. Because if we speak lies and hypocrisy, or if we speak lies in general, then we know that there's another spirit that's entering into us. If we can't keep the commandments, we know that there's other spirits that's entered into us. And it just shows that Christ is not in us, that Christ is, is warring within us. He's trying to enter into us. He's at the door knocking, but we got, right. to, we got to let him in. We got we got company already. Too many yeah. others that's already in there. Yeah. So it's interesting. You have to actually, that's why I said, add no more to thy sins. Because you, have, you actually have to start getting people out of the house. You know, yeah. like when your parents come home, you know, you, 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 you <laughs> everybody got to go. Yeah. Right. It's like, yo, you got to. All them, they all gotta go. You gotta start getting them out of there. You can't, you can't be letting people in the back door, at the same time kicking people out of the front. Like, 
it just doesn't work that way. So we have to be mindful to make sure that we're not allowing any other spirits to come in through the back door as we're getting them out so that our parents can actually come and dwell and that we can do things right. But we have to be obedient to our parents. We have to honor our father and our mother. So not allowing those other spirits to come into our temple or into our vessel is honoring our father and our mother because that's what they commanded us to do. So it just everything just ties together. Praise Allah. We now get an understanding of that law. Put none other Allah before Ahaya, our Allah. It starts in the mind. Being on God and being honest. We find another Allah, we gotta be honest and tell about it. Confess. Make right. confession and put the work in. All right. Don't be deterred. He actually loves us. Allah. He sent him to die for us. He wants us. He wants us to attain. Anything else, Brother Zakwa? All good here. Praise Allah. Praise Allah. Catch y'all on the next Allah class. All Ciao. right. Ciao. HRC, 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 HRC,